Welcome back again to Vortex Theory with the offline PhD here. In the last video, we have discussed about planning small form venture builds, and I did mention that one of the most important thing to consider is the small form factor case. So this is what I would like to focus in this video. Some of you in the comment section has also mentioned like where are the cases like N case M1 or Dan A4 or these other fancy cases. Okay. Last time I focused on, let's say, entry to mid-level cases, which usually cost less than $150 or euros or pounds or whatever the equivalent in your local currency is. Of course, there are better and optimized small form of other cases out there, but these are more targeted towards the niche enthusiast markets, with the price all the way up to $200-ish or more. And I do admit, I might have missed some other small form of other case types before, like the sandwich type. We'll discuss more in a bit, and it's time for the intro. Were you confused by the wide selection of the small forfeiture cases? Well, it is no surprise considering that the layout of SFF cases are usually very specific compared to average tower cases. Alright, let me get this straight. There are several parameters that are particularly important when considering a SFF case, and I have mentioned some of these before in the previous video. The first one being volume and footprint, and followed by GPU support and max GPU length, CPU cooler height and all-in-one liquid cooler support, storage support, power supply unit form factor, and airflow and cable management. But among all, volume is usually the greatest constraint because you need space to actually put something right. Regardless, most SFF case manufacturers will provide or advertise the details on the six items that I mentioned above. In the last video, I only mentioned three types of SFF cases, but they have something in common, which is GPU support. Yes, indeed, GPU these days can be pretty huge, with two, three, four, or five fans. But to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of fans, as they can get noisy pretty quick in huge numbers. Then not to mention that high-end graphics card also comes with high-end cooling feeds, but you get the point. So in a tiny system where integrated graphics like Intel HD series or the AMD APUs are sufficient, say only for watching Netflix or for simple web browsing or office work, additional graphics card may not be necessary. And guess what? There are also a bunch of GPU-less cases, which are significantly smaller compared to those with GPU support. One popular example of such case is the Inwin Shopping. It's small at 3.3 liters, come with integrated 150 watt power supply unit, and supports up to two 2.5 inch drive. For a home theater PC or a lightweight emulator PC, this case has become very popular among AMD APU builds such as the one using Ryzen 5 2400G. But the case quickly becomes toasty as airflow is quite restricted. Nonetheless, the GPU-less cases are also quite popular for enterprise users with Dell and HP has their own models. You're not going to do any hardcore gaming in office while your boss is watching, are you? Okay, back to the topic. GPU size is usually described by some parameters such as its length, number of slots, and sometimes the width. However, the number of slots can also be misleading sometimes because some GPUs have coolers that are higher than the number of actual slots that they occupy. So to accommodate people out there who'd like to put a GPU inside a SFF PC, case manufacturers try to find what kind of solutions are possible. As an expansion card, GPU typically sits upright on top of the motherboard. So naturally, if someone built a box that encloses the GPU and the motherboard dimensions, you already got yourself a case. And because of this simplicity, the shoebox looking SFF cases are quite common these days. If you need to accommodate more parts, you just have to extend the box, and you have the likes of Cooler Master 110 or the Cooler Master 130, which is longer. However, boxy looking cases often have large footprint unlike consoles which look much sleeker when you put them on a stand. So manufacturers need to consider how to install the GPU in a way that occupies the least amount of volume. 
It's quite straightforward actually. You can put the GPU sideways. But of course, now you need additional interface, such as the PCI Express riser to connect the GPU to the motherboard. Some manufacturers opted for putting the GPU side by side with the motherboard, and they're like, looks like all the components have very similar thickness, why don't we arrange them like a dozen of Dunkin' Donuts? And in the end, you get cases like the Silverstone ML08 or the Note 202, both of which can be placed on a vertical stand just like consoles. But cases like this often require low profile cooler and rarely fits a case fan to optimize airflow. Other manufacturers though design the so-called sandwich placement, where the GPU is installed beneath or behind the motherboard to further optimize volume utilization. Compared to the console-like cases, cable routing may be easier as the components are bundled closer together and cables can be managed into specific area within the case. Some examples of these cases are the Dun A4 SFX, the Geek A50, and Look Ghost S1. The drawbacks of these cases I would say it would be the availability, accessibility, and all of that will also be reflected in terms of pricing. Most of these boutique cases have been manufactured by smaller companies and they are often unavailable from your local retailers, which means that you need to import them yourselves and may end up with additional costs along the way. The inclusion of PCI Express riser, especially the high quality ones, also adds up to the pricing. But if you can afford all the hassles, then the sandwich cases are probably the best at offering performance over volume ratio. Meanwhile, we also have the SFF tower cases which usually have the same design from the full tower cases but are optimized for mini ITX motherboard. Unfortunately, these cases are somewhat large, sometimes even more than 25 liters in volume and will not always fit into the true SFF definition. But on the positive side, these cases would be more lenient on part constraints and installing parts within the case will be easier since you have more room to maneuver around. Some examples for these cases are the Fantex N2 Evolve ITX and the NZXT H200i. But I cannot recommend this case type if your intention is to build a true SFF PC. Alright, I think we have covered most of the SFF case types and let's discuss on your options based on budget constraint. I believe that you should ask yourself. How much am I going to spend for a case, just like any other purchase decisions? You should also decide for a range of budget that would allow some room for slight adjustment. From the pricing standpoint, I have made an arbitrary standard for SSF cases class. For the first one is the budget class which costs $70 or lower, and we have the second one which is the mainstream in between $70 to $150. And the last one is the enthusiast class, which costs $150 or higher. But don't get me wrong, it doesn't always mean that enthusiast cases are better than the budget ones. You simply need to find which one is the best for your own need. You can also make use of the SFF cases list on the SFF PC subreddit. The link is in the description. Regarding budget cases, well, they are obviously budget looking, where usually the design is simple and the material quality is just average. Take a look at the SG-13, which costs around $50. It has a minimalistic metal frame construction covered in thin steel skin that sometimes does not want to fit properly. However, its feature is also quite impressive on paper. You get GPU support of up to 270mm, and that means you can fit the NVIDIA Founders Edition in there. You also get 120mm all-in-one radiator mounting, ATX PSU support, as well as a single 3.5 inch hard drive bay within a volume of 11 liter. If you need more room, then take a look at Cooler Master 130, which supports 34 cm long GPU together with a 5 quarter inch slot for your optical disk drive. For those looking for a case with window to indulge into your RGB components, have a look at Ryzen Tech Medis or the Thermaltake Core V1. Both cases support small tower coolers if you decided that AIO is not your thing. Note that some cases have shorter GPU clearance, which is 170mm for the Matisse. Nonetheless, you will find shoebox cases mostly in this budget price range, but you are not missing any of the essential feature. If you're looking for stepping up your game in SFF building, you will need to look elsewhere. At the mainstream and enthusiast price brackets, you start finding more unique cases 
which means that you're expected to know what you want before purchasing. For example, the Note 202 and Raven RV Z03 both compete in the console-like class with both cases offer the option for vertical stand. The RV Z03 is somewhat bulkier, although it offers ATX PSU support as well as two 120mm case fans mounting. Meanwhile, the Note 202 doesn't support additional case fan unless you are using shorter GPU and using SFX PSU is a must. Like I mentioned earlier, if you don't need a discrete GPU, the in-win shopping would be the perfect home theater PC case. For gaming build though, then probably the sandwich types would be the way to go. For instance, the Dan A4 SFX fits full-size GPU, a couple of 2.5-inch drives within a 7-liter case. As always, the smaller the case is, the more constraints you'd have on your part options, and most of the time, the more expensive the case becomes. Alright, so you already know which case to pick based on your budget. But what else? I would suggest you to start looking into your supplier options. Cases from mainstream manufacturers such as Silverstone or Cooler Master would usually be easy to find at your local retailers or Amazon for example. But some of the specialized cases may require a bit of effort. For instance, cases like NKS M1 and Dan A4 SFX are only sold through SFF Labs which is delivered from Taiwan or the United States. This means that customers elsewhere would need to consider shipping time and possible additional customs costs. The Jonesville cases or the ZSA4 are only available through Chinese retailers such as AliExpress or Taobao, and often comes without warranty support. So make sure that you are aware of possible issues that may come with ordering some SFF cases, especially from abroad. Alright. By now, we have already discussed a bit about SFF case types, including their GPU-centric design options and the budget brackets. I hope that this video would help you make a purchase decision on your next SFF case. As always, feel free to ask any question or drop a comment down below. Your feedback would also give me some idea on what to discuss next. Give your like or dislike to help me improve this channel further and subscribe for more contents in my next publication and take care of my peers.